笑了。Doctor's Companion presents Doctor Who The Long Way Around, the weekly podcast where we review, discuss, and recap every episode of Doctor Who, one Doctor at a time. I'm Scott Corelli. I'm Cassandra Fredrickson. And I'm Nick Jimenez. Today on the show, we will be discussing the cavemen, a.k.a. 100,000 BC, a.k.a. parts two through three of An Unearthly Child, uh, which I refuse to call it that because... Come on, guys. The rest of the story has nothing to do with an unearthly child. Um, if anything, Susan has like n- really like nothing to do in these three <laughs> episodes, but cry and be scared and scream. Yeah, and yeah, cry and scream and be scared. Um, so yeah, so so we're gonna refer to it as the cavemen because uh, it's a little more specific, I think. But yeah, so we're talking about the three parts. That follow the opening episode uh, on an earthly child, and uh, features our uh, our heroes going back to uh, one hundred thousand BC. Um, yeah, so this is the the first Doctor's second story, and it's going to begin our second season of uh, the Long Way Round um, as we start talking about the second story of every Doctor, which is really exciting. Before we get to the cavemen, though. I wanted to discuss a couple of things um, because I have a feeling that this episode is going to run short. So let's let's <laughs> fill some time, eh? Um, <laughs> so so there was a couple of news items that I thought was interesting that I wanted to talk about. The big one I'll save, but like the first one, Peter Capaldi was recently at uh, a convention. I forget which one, and he was being interviewed and asked about the next season and who would be appearing in the next season if any characters would be returning. And he, not so subtly, suggested that Jenna Coleman may be returning as Clara, like in the midst of her adventures with me. Um, not me personally, but <laughs> we know what you mean. Yeah, <laughs> it still sounds weird when it's coming it does. out of my mouth. Um, so, what's her, yeah. What's her Viking name? A shielder? Yeah. A sh- yeah, a, shield, a shielder? A shielder? A shielder. Like that. Yeah. Um, Who's calling that? Yeah. Well, she doesn't want to be called that. It's disrespectful to the fictional character. Respect her choice. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so I don't uh, – I'm curious what you guys think of it. I personally – I don't like it. I hate it. I don't – I hope she never comes back and it's not because I don't like Clara because I really love Clara, especially toward the end. But I feel like we wrapped her up in a neat little bow and I don't really want to ever see her again unless it's in a spin off series that doesn't have anything to do with Doctor Who. I don't know. What do you guys think? It's very quintessentially Clara. <laughs> <laughs> it's very quintessentially Moffat. Yeah. yeah. Can't seem I mean, to let go of things. I mean, you remember how happy we were with the way that she she left at the end of uh, Dark Water, or uh, or Death in Heaven, or whatever that one was called. What was the one, the second one called? Oh, right, that's right. Because yeah. she just like walked down the street or whatever. Yeah, and I remember the three of us yeah. were so like that. It was so cool and yeah. elegant and 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 like you know and sad but beautiful. And then literally the next, you know, the 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 Santa Claus one, it was like right. she's back. And then, and then I think uh, again we were pretty happy with the way that she went out in uh, the episode where she dies. The yeah, raven. face the raven. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. We were pretty happy with that. And then she came back, and then we were really happy. I feel like third time's a charm. Let's not let's not go for four. I, right. I mean, unless they can just keep giving her perfect endings. <laughs> Maybe, yeah. But Moffat seems to be like the the guy at the casino who doesn't know when to stop. Yeah. When to stop? Yeah, because yeah. he's like, I keep winning. One more time. 
and then he's gonna lose it all like he did with the with the pawns yeah exactly it just reminds me because the pawns had so like five good endings and then yeah. it's just like oh yeah angels in new york no no literally the worst ending yeah I'd be kind of fine if it was sort of like the way Martha came back situation where it's like a, a, a like maybe she doesn't even interact with the doctor. Maybe she just like has to do with a, sto- a future story. You know, I would be I, I like I, I like that in theory. OK, however, I don't like it under Moffat as showrunner because Moffat isn't capable of doing that. Right. Every story he writes has to be the most important story ever written. And if Clara comes back, you bet your ass it'll be like this crazy epic thing where right. we're just like, oh, come on. Like yeah. it doesn't need to be like this because the Martha, Martha coming back, that was Russell T. And Russell T was really good at just, you know, being like, yeah, she had an ending. This has nothing to do with that. She's just, you know, she's still living her life out there. So why not have her live her life in an adventure with the doctor for a second? Mm-hmm. Right. Um which is which is totally cool, but I don't think Moffat's capable of that. I I think that's the reason why he's never brought back Captain Jack, for the similar reason. Mm-hmm. Although although I've heard that he might be in the Christmas special this year, that seems like the perfect place for him. I think. Yeah. Have you heard about that, Cass? No, I haven't. Yeah, apparently, um, he was in, uh, what's the Cardiff? Yeah, he was in Cardiff. Um, a few months ago, uh, like right after he rapped on Arrow, uh, he was in Cardiff and couldn't tell anyone why he was there. Oh. There's only two reasons anyone goes to Cardiff. Right. <laughs> exactly. Um, so, uh, so yeah, there's Doctor there's... Who and a get to Wales. <laughs> so there's a, there's a quite, you know, there's a, there's a quite a possibility that he's going to be the guest star in the Christmas special, which I think would be pretty, pretty great. I would love that. Yeah. Just, just, just because it would, I think it would be like the very first time since Moffat took over the show where he would even be really making reference to the Russell T Davies era. Sure. You know? Yeah. He's, I mean, those, to, he's, he's, he's been avoiding it. Kind of. Yeah, the closest thing I can think of is when when Rose showed up in Day of the Doctor. Right. Right. And even – I don't even know if, like, they referenced, um, like, the Master when Missy came back. Like, I don't even know if that was a thing. I can't remember. It's been too long. I don't think so. It was almost like sort of a soft reboot of the Master. Yeah. Yeah. I think they kind of reference that he went into the thing. I think they said something about – him saving the doctor's life or something like that. I think they, I think Missy said something about that when she first showed up. Yeah. Um, but it, it's so vague because right. they have such a long history. Yeah. Right. <sighs> I don't know. The only, the only reason or the only way I would be marginally okay with Clara coming back if she and, um, Maisie Williams are like space girlfriends. Yeah. That'd be sweet. <laughs> yeah. That's true. Cause they'd have to get Maisie Williams back as well. Right. Yeah, but but Maisie Williams has said multiple times that she, if they ever call, she'll be there. Well, yeah, but I mean, they'd have to they'd have to fit her into the whatever Game of Thrones schedule she was on, or whatever movie schedule she was on now. Right. Oh, is she in movies and stuff now? I mean, I know she's trying to be. Oh yeah, um, but I I know that I mean Game of Thrones like it's really easy to fit people into the Game of Thrones schedule because. Mm-hmm. Throughout the entire season, you only shoot for like three weeks because, <laughs> you know, all of your footage put together in a season of that show, unless you have one of the giant battle episodes, like mm-hmm. all of your footage equals to about 30 minutes. Mm-hmm. So because there's so many people. <laughs> right. Exactly. Exactly. You get like one five minute scene per episode. Um, so I think I think it'd be pretty easy to fit her in. But uh, anyway. Anyway. Yeah, so there was that. Then the other thing that I thought was interesting, so there was uh, a revelation recently that Moffat originally offered the role of the 12th Doctor to a black actor. Um, really? That, yeah, that he did not name, but they turned it down. Well, the rumored, the rumored name is that it was Joette Telly Jofor. 
That's not oh. the rumored name. That is who it was. Oh, okay. um, at first, the rumored name was Idris Elba. When when it was first said, everyone yeah. was like, "Oh, it was Idris Elba," but it wasn't. It was it was. Uh, oh my god! Because Idris, Idris Elba would make a crappy doctor. Idris Elba would not make a good doctor at all. He's too. He's kind of too butch. <laughs> like <laughs> he's what? a little too butch to be the doctor. Hey, yeah, he, he's not dorky enough. He's too tall yeah. and smoldering and intense. And the doctor, like, look at look at our doctors. The butchest doctor that we've ever had is the third doctor, and that really says a lot about the character. <laughs> yeah, <I think>. that's true. <laughs> yeah, but Chuetto so, would have been great, especially oh, if he kind man. of leaned towards his character in The Martian, or or yeah, or or even like his esocentricities in uh, Serenity. Mm-hmm. He would be he would be great. It would just be really weird because that would mean that Doctor Strange was the Doctor and Sherlock. It would be the Doctor Sherlock crossover that oh Tumblr has always yeah. wanted. <laughs> <laughs> um No, he would have made a great doctor, but he turned him down. Which makes a lot of sense. Yeah, it does. It does. It does. It's just it's unfortunate because that would have been really cool. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. It would have been really cool. But I love Peter Capaldi, so it is what it is. Um, That's really time. interesting. Yeah. Next time. I feel like I feel like he was probably too big of an actor for them to go for. Like, he's just at the cusp. Like, if he's on the fence of being too big, he's, like, just over the fence or, like, halfway over the fence. Right. Because I imagine he must have approached him around, like, coming off of 12 Years a Slave. Mm, I think it would have been maybe maybe right after he filmed it. Mm-hmm. Maybe because if if I remember correctly, I think they got Peter Capaldi like three years ago. Was his announcement special? It was the same summer as it was the same year. It, it, it was 2013. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, three years ago. Yeah. Um. So that would have been. I think that would have been before Twelve Years a Slave, right? Well, 12 Years a Slave came out like in the autumn of 2013, and I think Peter Capaldi was chosen in like the summer of 2013. Really? Because I remember it was – I remember that World War Z had already come out and everyone was like, oh, he played Who Doctor? Oh, yeah, that's right. I guess that's true. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, I I guess that makes sense. He was probably like – I just – I just played a a guy who got stolen – kidnapped and – Forced to be a slave for twelve years. Uh, I don't want to play the doctor. <laughs> also, you know, there's a certain there's a certain level of responsibility being the first non-white male actor to portray the doctor or James Bond or anything mm-hmm. like that. That right. you have to be a certain type of person to go like be willing to go for. You know. Mm-hmm. And it, and it strikes me like he, him and Idris Elba to a certain extent. I feel like they both strike me as guys who are just like, I don't want to deal with that. I like, you know, like that's cool. Yeah. Somebody should do that, but it's not going to be me. I don't want to get know. yelled at by racist nerds for five years. Like I'm yeah, good. Exactly. Um, so it makes sense to a certain extent. But yeah, he would have been a really great doctor, yeah. I think. I mean, look what the internet has done to like the, the, the women that are playing the Ghostbusters. Right. That's a train wreck. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. What a train wreck of a situation that is. Right. Oh, God. Um, but, yeah, I, 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 I like it. Um, I think it would have been interesting. I, it would have been interesting to see him play with Moffat's dialogue. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know what that would have looked like. Curious. <laughs> but, um, anyway... Yeah, so I think that's about all the Doctor Who news that we've had since uh, our last episode. We've put it off long enough. Yeah. Um, All right. Well, let's talk about uh, the Caveman uh, Part 1. So the Caveman, as as the case was with an an unearthly child, was written by Anthony Coburn and directed by Waris Hussein, uh, produced by Verity Lambert. Hussein and Lambert, both characters in that movie we watched. Um, so uh, take it away, Cass. Tell us about uh, the Cave of Skulls. Okay. Um, 
I'm gonna preface this by saying that I forgot how awful this story is. <laughs> it's really bad. <laughs> and um, I'm I'm visiting my family right now, and I was watching without my headphones, like this first part, and my mom was sitting there in the kitchen with me, and she just looks at me and she's like, this is what you're talking about later? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyway... Uh, so, Cave of Skulls. Um, so we start off with that really iconic shot of the TARDIS with the shadow creeping over it, um, mm -hmm. which is the only good thing about this. Well, actually, that's a lie. It's the one of two good things about this episode. Um, and we cut to the guy who the shadow belongs to, and he's just like, what? And he's a caveman. Um, Big reveal. That was, that made me laugh, because there's like this really, like, sudden musical cue yeah you see like the shadow and then oh what's the shadow it's this caveman it's guy it's this one guy <laughs> <laughs> and don't the don't the credits show over his face so it's hold, yeah. like held on his face for like 30 seconds and it says like the cave of skulls on yeah his face. it's really uncomfortable <laughs> yeah. um so he's like what um and then we cut to this cave of like dirty people in skins and it's really bad. So they're all waiting on this other guy to start a fire with a bone and a pile of twigs. Oh my God. He's just rolling the bone. <laughs> yeah. <in his> hands. <laughs> it's and it's implied that he's, he's been doing that for days. <laughs> yeah. What? What an idiot. He's really bad at this. Like at one point he gets really frustrated because the tribe is like, we want fire, bah. And he's like, okay, I'm going to call on the powers of this sun god and it's going to channel through my fingers and the stuff's going to catch fire. So he like gets frustrated. So he picks up all the twigs and just puts it to his face and yells into them. Yeah. And it's A plus acting. Um, yeah, Za is his name. Yeah. And uh, his, his father was a fire maker. <laughs> His, my name's Zah. My fire. father was a fire maker. Yeah, his father made fire once, and once. and I love the bit where he, he like goes and talks to the old woman who I can't remember what her name is. Um, I think she's, she's just the old woman. Okay, so she's just an old woman, and he's just like he's like, tell me how my dad made fire, and she's just like, I don't know, and he's just like, ah, yeah. <laughs> There's a lot I, of. <laughs> um, I, I want to rewatch this. That's not true. I don't want to rewatch yeah. this, but but. I want to rewatch this and count how many times the word fire is said in all yeah. three episodes. Like do one of those like YouTube things. It's just yeah. like that. Like how many times fire is said in this episode. It's just pings in the corner. Yeah. <laughs> ping, ping. <laughs> oh man. So this episode starts off a trend that I don't really care about called caveman politics and – there's no reason for me to care about these people because I I just don't. Um and really like it sets it sets the stage for like every other Doctor Who like it's very formulaic, but uh -huh. this is just really, really it's really bad at it. Um because yeah, there's so, the first time. Yeah, and there's so many other episodes where like you're thrown into this world and you don't know who these people are and they're talking about their politics or their struggle or whatever, but it's so much more compelling than these people just yelling into sticks. And I, yeah. so I, I guess I respect it for that, but it's just like, Oh God. Um, so At least this, this guy, uh, James Coburn, despite having written the first story of all time, he never wrote for the show again. Yeah. I'm not surprised. Because he wrote – he actually wrote the second episode, which was called The Masters of Luxor. Mm -hmm. And then they decided to make uh, the, the Daleks. Daleks instead. Good choice. And uh, yeah, he never – I guess that made him mad and he never worked for the show again. <laughs> he didn't like my caveman politics. Um, <laughs> but – yeah, so we go back to this other guy out in the wilds, and he still has a bunch of question marks over his head because he's still looking at the TARDIS. Um, and Barbara and Ian wake up in the TARDIS, and Ian 
like fell down and bumped his head and Barbara's like, I don't know what's going on. Um, and the doctor and Susan are like kind of running, not running, but like kind of briskly examining the, the TARDIS console. Um, and it's, it seems to be like they, they also have no idea what they're doing. They're just like, Oh, uh, this isn't supposed to happen. Um, and so they're talking and they pull up the, the scanner and there's this like bleak other world thing. And Ian's like, whatever, it's a trick. Um, and I like how Ian is the one that's like, I can't accept this. And then Barbara's like, whatever, man, roll with it. Cause I, I just believe them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have no reason to back it up. I just do. Yeah. She's like, I, I have no other, like, she's in such shock that she doesn't know what to do. So she just rolls with it. Mm -hmm. And I like, I like that they're still like super confused because a lot of times, especially in modern who you like have the initial like, oh, it's bigger on the inside. And then they just kind of go with it. But I like that it takes them like 15 minutes to be like, oh, Oh crap. This is this is actually happening. Mhm. Mm um so I like that it's kind of true to what would actually happen if this alien kidnapped these people in this box. Mhm. Mm um but the second good thing about this episode is this quote that honestly I don't even know why it's there because it's so much better than everything else in this story. Um, maybe it's Mary kind of, Lambert wrote it. Maybe it's got like such like a poetry to it. And so the Ian, Ian is just like, I don't believe you guys. And the doctor says, if you could touch the alien sand and hear the cries of strange birds and watch them wheel in another sky, would that satisfy you? And I'm like, Oh man, that's so good. It is and really good. I think that kind of encapsulates the doctor, at least at this point too, because it, He's just, he's so fed up with, it reminds me of when, um, when Russell T would write David Tennant talking about Gallifrey. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, it's very evocative of that. Like, I don't know mm -hmm. how that line ended up in the story because it's so good, but I love that line so much. It's very poetic. Yeah. Um, so Ian's like, well, yeah. So the doctor <laughs> opens the, the the doctor opens the door, and Ian's like, oh, what? Yeah, and he's like, I still don't buy it. Yeah. So they all they all go outside, and the doors close. Um, and Ian is still in disbelief, and Barbara just kind of side eyes him, like she's like, okay, come on, come on, dude, we're, you're we're a man of science. Up. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I like that. This story is also the first time that the tart, like the uh, the chameleon circuit, isn't working because the doctor questions why it's still a police box. Um, yeah, and I like that we start this like journey with them. Like the TARDIS is like, oh, now I'm a police box. I like it. Um, <laughs> so the doctor goes outside and he collects samples to figure out what what year it is because the uh, on the console it's not reading correctly. Mm -hmm. Um, and the other three, like, find a skull, and they're just like, oh, that's weird, I wonder what this is. Um, and he, the doctor is, like, you see this, this shadow on the doctor again by the initial caveman, and he lights a pipe, because that's what old men in the 60s do, I guess. He lights a pipe, and then this guy immediately jumps him. Mm-hmm. Like, ah, oh, fire! Oh. Um... <laughs> And Susan loses her mind. Like, she, she, she has no chill. No. Negative chill. No. She's like, oh, grandfather. I don't even want to, like, it's terrible. Um, it's, and it's really bad. Susan has the capacity to be, to be a good character, but frequently she's just written to be really whiny and really screaming. Yeah. And I don't, I don't like that. Um, so they I can't find imagine working on this set and having to film this. No, Ugh. like I don't, and I don't know if it's it's like a directorial choice or if it's in the script that like oh Susan moans and complains, but I don't know. It's um, so shrill. It's irritating. It is. Yeah. 
<laughs> uh, it's the first of many Susan screams. Um, so Su- they- Susan loses all of her chill, and Ian has nothing but chill. Like, instantly. She's just like, oh, God. Like, does she do this all the time? I just, <laughs> no. I don't know. Maybe that's why she likes the 60s. They've never been in trouble about. before. Yeah, exactly. I don't know. Ian, and um, Ian is just like, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> all right, all right. I'm the man. Calm down. I got this. <laughs> you are more than welcome to hold on to me for strength. <laughs> <laughs> um, so they, they find the doctor's stuff, um, and Susan proceeds to flip her lid even more. Um, we go back to the cave, and there's more caveman politics. Um, mm. And the, There's that uh, bit. There's that bit. Because, like, during this whole time, so the cavemen... They talk like cavemen, but every once in a while they form very coherent sentences. Yeah. Where it's like that – I mean that's a lot for a caveman <laughs> who was just like barking about fire and and dancing around like a gorilla a second ago. Right. Um, there's a bit where the guy, uh, Za, is like <laughs> – Za is like, I'm going to uh, – I'm going to make fire – and then when I have fire, I'll make all of the people bow to me. And I'm like, yeah. that's a very specific concept. <laughs> like bowing has a lot of levels to it that I don't think a caveman would be capable of understanding. <laughs> you know, because it's not just like subordination. It's also like. Like reverence. Like God quality to yeah, it. And respect. Like, yeah, respect. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of qualities to bowing before someone that I mm-hmm. feel like would go over a caveman's head. And so when he says, like, I'll make them bow to me, I was like, oh, that's, that's huh. weird, right? <laughs> that's a little weird. <clears throat> also, I love that the two main cavemen, the, uh, there's like, so there's the lady cave, the cave woman, the young one who's named Her, of course. <laughs> yeah. Um, H U R, Her. Uh, her. Yeah, very clever. And then there's Za, the 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 main dude with the dad who was a fire maker. Her and Za. <clears throat> and then there's the leader from the other group, um, who's trying to take over Za's group, who's named Cal. Why does he have a real name? I'm like, really, Cal and Za is somebody yeah, a Superman no fan? Like what? Yeah. <laughs> really interesting. I mean, I guess his name isn't like. Rah. It's which it's 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 just weird that he has a name. Like which guy? Cal. Like Za and her are just noises that were made at them that stuck. <laughs> <laughs> right. Her. Okay, yeah. that's my name. Z- but like Cal. Yeah. It'd be like if, it would be like if there was a caveman and like Scott. Right. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> my name is Frederick. <laughs> right. Frederick the Caveman. I'm Douglas Caveman. <laughs> uh, and, Cave, then, uh, and then and then her father is named Horg. <laughs> sure. Wait, pork? Horg. <laughs> oh. A H O R G. R G. Oh, that's a her. pork. Her oh. son of Horg. Oh. Barg. Yeah. Son of Barg. Barg. No, no, her would be daughter of Hork. Oh, yeah, whatever, 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 whatever. They don't know. They didn't have gen- They didn't have a binary gender. Fire! System. <laughs> if you had hair and two hands, you were, you were, you were, hunt- it was hunting time. <laughs> oh, man. <clears throat> so, okay. after. So, man politics. <laughs> yeah. The, uh, so. Cal, which we don't know his name yet, but Cal brings the doctor to the cave and everyone's like, oh, it's, what is this dude? What, what is this? Some old guy. Um, and there's more. Oh, who are you? Who are you? Who's who it? are you? Yeah. Um, there's more caveman politics and the doctor kind <laughs> of. You keep you keep skipping over the caveman politics, but I just and you say caveman politics and I feel like people get a certain image in their mind. And let me explain that. <laughs> The caveman politics are literally who gets the fire. 
You get who to gets, fire? Yeah. I get who to gets fire? to be a leader? I get to fire. You get to fire? Yeah. Who has to fire? Who has fire? Who has power? She's a woman. I want woman. I want no. fire. Woman fire? It's <laughs> literally the conversations that are going on for three and a half minutes. No, there's no, there's no like, like why should the cave with five members tax the same amount of animal pelts as the cave with three members? That makes That's no sense. sense. I would watch. I would watch the crap out of that. We should have yeah. one cave where we keep all of our pelts safe. <laughs> well, who would control that cave? You, Alexander Cave Hamilton. <laughs> There's just one cave man who's like a staunch Federalist. I will not. I will not argue about this in a committee. <laughs> <laughs> so this is how democracy dies. <laughs> In a cave of skulls. In a cave of skulls. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> See, I would love that, but this yeah. is yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's literally like five extras <laughs> arguing about fire and woman and cave. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> so the doctor wakes up and everyone like freaks out and he's just like, dudes, calm down. I'll I'll get your fire, it's fine. It's fine. it's fine um so he's just like oh no i lost my matches um so he asks the cavemen to take him back to the tardis because then then he's like i'll make all of you fire whatever um and they are like no burn the witch burn him without our fire um and <sighs> <laughs> And by burn, I mean throw rocks at him. Yeah, throw throw him in the cave of skulls. Everyone, um, get your moods and roll them in your hands. <laughs> See if he floats around the doctor. If he floats, he's a witch. <laughs> just, they all just, like, pick up bones and roll them at the doctor. Fire, <laughs> fire. Go ahead, keep doing this all day, by all means. Yeah. <laughs> Um, Ooh, I'm a witch. Ooh. And there's there's like the beginnings of like a caveman riot, and then all of a sudden Barbara, Ian, and Susan, Susan just like screams and like jumps a caveman, and I don't know how they found this cave or whatever, but um, there's like a scuffle, and then this cow guy just looks at Barbara's face and like reaches out to touch her, like Tarzan and Jane, like, oh man, this this lady's hot woman. Um, yeah, and then the old woman's like, or no, I think I think the the young lady is, just gets jealous. She's like, ugh, and smacks his hand away, and <laughs> and the old woman is super bloodthirsty because she's like, kill them, kill them. But then they get taken to this cave called. The cave of skulls, and there's some skulls, and dun dun. I want to um, read. I yeah. want to read. I, I want to read three sentences from the uh, the the Doctor Who wiki. Oh God. Okay. And I just let's just all put this into perspective. Okay, so this <laughs> is from the summary. This is from the end of part one, or part part two from Cave of Skulls. It says, "It says <laughs> the Doctor and his companions are led away." Horg tries to take her from Za, but Za insists that the doctor sacri- that with the doctor's sacrifice, Orb will return and Fire will return also. The <laughs> tribe will retain Za's leader. Horg seems to accept this. Oh my god. Oh my god. I just who's Orb? When did Orb show up? I think Orb it's the up. sun. Orb is the s- what sun? The sun, like no, the the actual sun, like the burning thing in the sky. Oh, the god. oh my god! Okay, yeah, because they're just like they talk about. I thought they were saying or like O R, because it's oh, no. just like they talk uh, about like this god. But then I'm like, oh no, it's the sun. So so the the cave cavemen know what the word orb is. <laughs> yeah, a, a word that I don't think I even knew until I was like twelve. <laughs> orb orb i don't i can honestly say i don't think not one time in the past i think this is the first time i've even used the word orb in probably three years <laughs> how often do we actually use that word i know i don't use it very often I... it depends on how much you play video games i guess i guess that's true fair enough i feel like orbs come up a lot in video games yeah I tend to use the word sphere more than orb. 
but orb. I guess that just wouldn't be my first choice of word for the sun. No, it's not, especially not if I'm I'm a caveman. I would call it like the big hot. The big hot? <laughs> the big, big hot, hot sky. I like that. I like that. <laughs> It sounds like a new Richard. That sounds like the next uh, Richard Linklater movie. The I know, right? The big hot. The big hot. <laughs> the, the the conclusion to the Days and Confused trilogy. Oh my god! Yeah, this one said like in the early nineties. Yeah, the big hot. Oh man! <laughs> so it's like so it's Austin in August. Yeah. The big uh, hot. I'm gonna make that now. <laughs> Um, you can't make a Richard Linklater movie. <laughs> <laughs> no, it'll just be a Richard Linklater movie directed by Nicholas. <laughs> <Mendes. laughs> <laughs> you, you, that's like the subtitle on the poster or whatever. The, the yeah, uh, yeah, it's called the Big Hot, and it's like <laughs> it's directed by Nick and Venice. <laughs> it just says on it a, mo- a Richard Linklater movie. <laughs> Did you know that um in at the beginning of Spy Kids 3 colon game over um <laughs> at the very beginning it, instead of like a Robert Rodriguez production or film it's a Robert Rodriguez digital file. <laughs> what? Cuz he so uploaded anyway- it. Directly from like a hard drive <laughs> to theaters. Oh, that's the worst. <laughs> Spy Kids 3 underscore MOV. That's the worst. Let's talk about the Forest of Fear, Nick. <laughs> okay. So, Carmen and Juni have reached level three. <laughs> it's a joke for like four people. So... <laughs> So, so Team Doctor are stuck in the Cave of Skulls. They found that these these skulls look like as if they've been like split open from like the the top of the the skull, the base of the skull. Is that what you would call it? Uh, no, yeah, no. The, the base no, of the skull be like is like the crown. The crown. Yeah, okay. Yeah. There's like a single narrow incision at the crown of each skull in the Cave of Skulls. So the the gang is like that's weird, and um. They they manage to escape, and meanwhile they the tribe is all asleep. Um, the old lady wakes up. God, I hate that she doesn't have a name. She's such an she's such an important character. Um, she steals Zaw's knife. <laughs> <laughs> she takes Zaw's knife, which is like a big deal because I can't. There's never any concrete proof of this, but I think that's the only knife in that cave. I think that's like the tribe knife. mm Hmm. And um, so the only sharp rock they ever found. Yeah, it's the only sharp rock they've ever found. So, but little does the old woman know is that her has actually seen her <laughs> lowercase. <laughs> okay, so H U R sees little H E R steal the knife, and then um, when they get to the when she gets to the cave of skulls, there's like this big rock, and she's like, ah, dag nab it. But I I know another way because I'm smart. Meanwhile. Um, so so they're trying to get free of the cave. Susan screams again. (laughs) Because, you know, woman folk, they be, they be, they be getting startled. And, uh, her wakes up Zah and they're like, hey, (laughs) freaking someone took your knife, man. (laughs) Um, And then, uh. So they so they go they go to the so oh she went to the cave of skulls and then hers like oh the elder woman's afraid of fire so she's going to try and kill the 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 outsiders in order to prevent them us from learning the, their their secrets of fires and so um <laughs> meanwhile the elder woman is freeing team doctor who um Zaw and her <laughs> are trying to move the stone and uh so they escape and, and Zah, there's this really weird scene. Okay, so like the cavemen confront the old woman, mm-hmm. and then Zah kind of like grabs her and lowers her to the ground, but the woman like freaks out. Like, mm-hmm. like she like he like throws her on the floor, but it was a very stage throw. You know what I mean? Right. Um. So. <laughs> 
Her convinces Za that the only way that he'll keep the tribe leadership is if they capture the old man, the doctor, and that te- make them harn- teach him how to harness fire. And Za's like, that makes sense. You're making sense. Her, I want you to be my right hand. I want you to do point on this. We're going to go into that forest of fear and we're going to find that old man and <laughs> his two wives and his son. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, back in the Forest of Fear, uh, the team's kind of falling apart. Uh, the Doctor and Ian are fighting over who's like the alpha male. Um, uh, Susan and Barbara are, are crying a lot. Um, and yeah, and, and like it and, and, you know, and, and you know, not not to drive a point in. I mean, I know it's 1963 and and gender politics and whatnot, but it, it, it really is a bummer to see this show that is going to have some of my favorite female characters in television, you know, like River Song and Clara Oswald and Sarah Jane Smith to kind of just have like, yeah, like the kind of uh, finger curling, you know, like a faint spell, you know, it, it, it was kind of a bummer. Right. And it, 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 it doesn't help. It doesn't do this episode any favors in terms of aging well. Um, So they're lost in the forest. Um, They're <laughs> they find. OK, so like the doctor's like, OK, I'm hot and all. I'm I'm hot. I'm tired. I've been running. <laughs> I'm like a hundred years old. And Ian's <laughs> like, okay, so why don't you stay back with the women? <laughs> like, okay, so then they there's like a couple minutes where they're fighting over what the line order is going to be. So eventually they settle on like, okay, doctor, you'll be in the front with your granddaughter because she seems to know where she's going. The um, Barbara will be in the middle, so if she faints, either one of us could catch her, and I'll be bringing up the rear. And the doctor's like, I am cool with that. And then Barbara flips her shit again and starts screaming, and the camera pans down, and there's like a dead warthog. Like some kind of some kind of, of hog or pig or beast, right? Was, is that what yeah. it was? Yeah. So, I... Okay, so... I'm going to try and paint a, a, a picture with the the to, for you the listener. The camera pans down, and there is like a, the body of a of a of a warthog, <laughs> and it's it looks like it's been dead for a few hours. Like it it's not like looking up at Barbara being like, "Help me! I was just, I'm right. dying." No, he like. I don't. I don't know, man. I just I, that 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 moment rang really false to me because I don't know if anyone would scream at the sight of a dead animal. I think Susan would. Susan. Would. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Susan, Susan would scream at the sight of a pen out of place. Yeah. So, so Zahn. I, I also think it's really funny that the pig is very obviously fake. Like it looks like someone just did a paper mache like oh yeah art yeah. project. <laughs> like it looks like it's coming out of the ground. <laughs> yeah. It also it's apparent that in the script they didn't know what animal they were going to make in their lab, so no one actually refers it to it as a pig or a warthog. They just keep calling it the animal. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, it and then of, in part four, they start referencing it as a pig. Um, yeah, it, it does kind of. It, it does look very boar like. It has very thick, hearty tusks. Yeah, yeah um, I think it's a boar. Yeah, okay. so figure that one out. Um, boar. <laughs> so Zahar catches up with everybody, um, but not you know just as quickly as they uh, they catch up with Team Doctor. Za is attacked by something. We never really see it. It. It like it, it's like a, it's like they put like a fur coat over like, maybe like a single block, and then just mm-hmm. threw it at Zaw at the actor <laughs> that plays Zaw. How would you describe the wild beast, Scott? Yeah, I mean that's about right. I, I think it's like a a fur fur blanket wrapped around uh, wrapped around a uh, like a cement block. Yeah, they just they just threw at him. Yeah. And then I think I think we get the most blood I've ever seen on Doctor Who. Yeah, so Za gets effed up. Za gets laid out by this wild beast. And the camera covered pans, in blood. Yeah, he's covered in blood. Barbara and Ian are like, oh, we have to help him. And the doctor's like, no! No, you let him die! 
<laughs> he calls them savages. Yeah, he calls them savage. You know, the doctor. Um, and so Susan's like, I'm we can't we we can't we can't leave Barbara and Ian behind. The doctor's like, no, Susan, we're leaving him to die. <laughs> And then her's like, oh, these humans seem to be helping our friends out. Could this be friendship? What's happening to me? And then her's kind of a kind of a jerk to Susan for a little bit because her, okay, her thinks that Susan is trying to s- steal Zoff from her. <laughs> little age. Um. So anyway, the doctor's like, look, if you guys want <laughs> fire, fine. So he picks up a stone and he it, they get Zod to draw they get they get back to the TARDIS, but Ian is still kind of the Ian's kind of like I'm I was getting very like proto like Rory Mickey vibes, you know? Mm-hmm. This yeah. whole episode. Like, mm-hmm. you know, man shall not trust you know like the, the, the second commandment of the show is boyfriend shall not trust the doctor. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Very true. Yes. And so um, the doctor says that like, hey, let's 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 like make him let's make a stretcher and get Zaw back to the TARDIS. We can we can get him. We can we can heal them there. Back at the settlement. Cal, remember him, is back at the cave and he's like, where is everybody? So he finds that old woman and she's like, oh, the doctor. I, I, I set I set those weird guys free and Cal's like okay kills the old woman so deal with that for however long you need to and then <laughs> um he returns to the tribe to inform him that it was Za who let the doctor free so he could keep the fire to himself so now the tribe doesn't know who to trust you know do we trust Zal do we trust Cal Cal well, that's I mean part, that's part four. Oh, okay yeah part part three ends with so he kills her uh and then goes out into the woods and like so like then the or into the forest of fear and then the doctor uh and the gang they they have the stretcher and then they turn to head off and then Cal is just like blocking their way cuz he's he wants to be he he's he wants to be the new the new leader now the tribe yeah yeah he's like I'm the leader now and I'm going to go get him no he has um, a bunch of people with him yeah right right but he but he doesn't have yeah, the he conversation like no, he wakes everybody up and he's like, oh, that bitch, Zod, ran away with our fire. Let's get him. And they're like, oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> There's a lot of conversations about fire. Yeah. <laughs> well, they all, so so part four, the fire maker, they all come back to the cave. And then Zod's like, yeah, no, Zod, or, or, or Cal's like, no, 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 Zod totally, totally killed the old woman. And you can't prove otherwise because... Look, he's already dead. So it's, I guess they killed each other. Look, he even has a knife. Look at this. You see this? See this stone knife? He's even got this knife. And the doctor's like, let me look at that. He looks at it and he goes, there's no blood on this knife. How did he kill that woman if there's no blood on this knife? And he's like, oh, it's a bad knife. It lies. (laughs) Nice nice defense. Good good defense. Good defense, Cal. And then uh, the doctor's like, well, let me see your knife. And Cal's like, all right, here you go. My knife is much better. And he's like, your knife is covered in blood. And he's just like, what's blood? And they're like, he's, <laughs> he's just like, look, this is the thing. See, they've got – he's got water, red water coming out of his body because he's cut, because he's injured. This knife has the red water on it, you stupid cavemen. <laughs> Do you not understand? He's the murderer. And he's like, aren't you? And Cal- Cal's like, yeah, I did it. I totally killed that old woman. Look, she was one of the fire. And I wanted the fire. And, you know, I had to kill her. So, whatever. Who cares, right? Pfft, whatever. And everyone is like, yeah, no, we totally care, dude. And he's like, no, nah, well, shit. Um, <laughs> <laughs> And so then they they throw the the Doctor Who group into uh, back into a cave, and they're like, "All right, go build a fire." And they're like, "Okay." So like Ian gets down and he starts Boy Scouting some fire, um, or whatever the British equivalent of Boy Scouts are. Um, it's Boy Scouts. <laughs> it is it just Boy Scouts? Yeah. Okay. 
Um, so, so yeah, so he starts, uh, boy scouting up some fire with rubbing some sticks together. Cause you use sticks, you don't use bones. Um, and, uh, he gets a fire started and I think it's, is it, it's Zah who comes in at first. Right. And so he comes in and he's like, wow, good work with that fire. And everyone like is not listening to him, <laughs> it's like ignoring him. <laughs> and he's like. So how, how how's everybody doing? And they're just like ignoring him. And he's like, "Cool, are you guys? I mean, are you guys all right?" And then the doctor, yeah. the doctor's just like, "Are you gonna let us out of here? Because we made the fire." And he's like, "No, you can't." And everybody's like, "Oh, come on!" Like, <laughs> <laughs> I just love them giving him the cold shoulder, and, <laughs> and, and Zaz just like trying to start a conversation. <laughs> my favorite scene in the whole up in the whole story um and then cal shows up because apparently they didn't do anything to him for killing the elder guy so cal shows up and uh they like wrestle um they wrestle over the fire because there's fire now and i guess zah is trying to figure out how to move it to like show everyone but he doesn't know how to move fire because he doesn't know how fire works because he's a stupid caveman. And, <laughs> and, and then like Cal shows up and he's like, oh, you got the fire figured out. Cool. I'm going to kill you and take all the credit. So then they start fighting and the doctor and the companions, as they have the entire story, they treat this moment in, in a way that I can only describe as – you have accidentally wandered into an alley where two wild dogs are fighting <laughs> and and you want to watch the fight because you're curious, but also it's really scary. That's kind of the vibe that they have the whole story. It's like, I mean, I want to I want to see how this shakes out, but I don't want to get in the middle of it. But so I'm going to I'm going to kind of stay close to the wall, but I'm totally going to watch this because this is going to be nuts. Right. Um, that's that's the vibe that they all have. Like they're all scared but also really interested in how this is gonna shake out. And the stakes are about as dire for either party. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um so they have a fight to the death. Uh and I think Za wins. I Zah can't wins. really it is is it Cal? No no no, no 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 he 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 crushes Cal's head with that big okay, bowler yeah. thing. So Zah wins. Za wins. Yeah, so Za, Za, like, Za, like, hits him over the head and then picks up a boulder and smashes his skull in. Um, uh, really, I mean, it's really violent. Uh, the doctor's <laughs> not into it. No. None of them are, especially not Susan. Um, Susan cringes big time. And so, big time. so Za is like, all right, well. That's done, and he like drags the guy away, and leaving them behind. And, they're, and then they're all just like, "Okay, but seriously, what are we gonna do now?" And then Susan picks up a human skull that used to belong to a living person, <laughs> and she decides that it's arts and crafts time, <laughs> and she makes a torch, and then puts the skull over the torch. Essentially making a Ghost Rider torch <laughs> where, like, the skull is on fire like Ghost Rider. And Wait a second. How old is Ghost Rider? Keep like, going. I'm, I'm, I'm going I'm to look this up. No, it's like the 70s. Because Go Ghost Rider was around the time of uh, Evil Knievel, I think, is when he was created. Hmm. I think that was the idea behind it anyway. Um, so she makes a Ghost Rider torch. And she's like, huh, look. I mean, I there there was no planning behind this. No. He just picked up a torch and put a skull on it, a human skull that belonged to a living person, put it on the torch, and was just like, oh, this, look how this looks. This is weird, right? <laughs> like, what kind of writing is this? Like, he just... In Susan's defense, A, it works. It <laughs> works for it, what? It's not doing anything. It distracts the cave, the cavemen. No, 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 not in her defense. Ian had that plan that had nothing to do with Susan. 
Okay. Susan was just putting a skull on a torch for no reason. <laughs> just, to, just to watch it burn. Just to see what happens. Oh my god. I mean, she had to do... Okay, she was like, okay, look, what do I have at my disposable? I have sticks, skulls, fire. <laughs> What if I, you know, it's kind of like if, if you, if you verbalize, if she were to turn to the doctor and be like, I have a plan. I'm going to take one of those skulls, put it on a stick, set it on fire, freak him out. But that's exactly what happens. So like she does that and she's like, look, everybody. And, and she's like, look, it's everybody, like, it's alive. And yeah, they're she's like, like what? look, it's alive. And it's like, what, what is the flaming skull? What are you talking about? <laughs> this like, that's not what a live is, right? Yeah. <laughs> and so Ian is the first to correct her. And he goes, no, 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 not alive, but recently dead. And they're like, what are you talking about, Ian? So then they line up four of these flaming skulls on sticks and stick them into the ground and then hide around a corner. And then her shows up and she's like, oh, my God, they're dead. The fire murdered them. <laughs> And they're just like, they're just like, sweet, it worked. Let's get out of here. And I'm just like, where are you going? How are you leaving? Why did you have to distract them before you left? Why didn't you just leave? Yeah, they and were there making you stay. Out. So they leave. And, and instantly upon leaving, the cavemen start chasing them, like the end of the prologue of Raiders of the Lost Ark. Yeah. And so they're like running through the forest toward the toward the plane uh or in this case the tardis and <laughs> and there's these great close up shots of Susan running and just getting twigs like smacked in her face um <laughs> from people just off camera it's amazing uh and so they run into the tardis and they're like okay cool we got out of here and then the cavemen show up right behind them and they all throw their 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 sticks uh, and then the TARDIS disappears and they're just like, wait, what just happened? And I have to say, for a society of cavemen who were so obsessed with the fact that Zah's father made fire and so therefore if he made fire, they should be able to make fire. So how do they make fire and having no clue how to do it? I can only imagine what the rest of their lives were after seeing the box that disappeared. Right. They probably all went crazy and died. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I mean, really, um, they probably kept going into caves and like, just like shouting from inside the cave. Have I disappeared yet? <laughs> they probably stood there waiting for the TARDIS to come back until they all starved to death. <laughs> Most likely. Yeah. Um, and then inside the TARDIS, uh, the, they don't, the, the doctor's like, I don't, the TARDIS is acting weird. So I'm just going to go and I guess it'll surprise us. It'll be, it'll be, it'll be a surprise. And so then they show up somewhere, uh, and the doctor like looks out at the window or looks out on the TV screen thing. And it's just like, well, I mean, that could be anywhere. And they're like, cool, let's go explore. And he's like, yeah, all right. And so then they go to explore and then we zoom in to the radiation uh, meter that sl the needle slowly climbs from zero to danger. So where does it, so where does it go, Scott? The danger zone. Thank you. <laughs> can I, can I quote something from, from the, from the TARDIS wiki real quick? Absolutely. The four try to think of a means of escape. Absent-mindedly, Susan places a skull inside of a flame. <laughs> so she's kind of doing it like, you know, you know, when you're like in a doctor's office and you're just playing with like a pen. I just, I like the idea of her doing that and then putting on a puppet show for everyone. And right. Just, and then just Barbara and Ian just being like, Jesus. <laughs> Oh I really, God. you know, God bless Carol Ann Ford for taking that direction, though. I know. Can you just, like, absentmindedly light this human skull on fire? <laughs> and I just, I just love the idea of her taking two of them and have them talk to each other. Yeah. And you just cut to Barbara and Ian, and they're just, and they're, and, and Barbara, Ian's just like, 
I mean, I told you we shouldn't have went home with her. I don't know no. why you dragged me into this. No, well, this brings up, well, this brings up why we started all this in the first place. I think I think Susan needs to be under protective custody. <laughs> they, they just, like, they're looking at Susan silently, and then they just slowly turn and look at each other, and then that's the shot. Yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, Grandfather, man. look. Stop that child. What are you oh, doing? she's making the skulls talk again. Yeah. <laughs> she's seen so much death. <laughs> oh, that would be the greatest revelation of all time is that uh, the Ronnie is actually a, a, a future incarnation of Susan. Of Susan. Just crazy Susan. <laughs> Heck yeah. Having been, having been left behind by the doctor and oh my God. a few times and just hates him. <laughs> I've always knew something was wrong with you. Remember that time you played with those skulls and fire? Remember that time we met that those cave of dum dums? <laughs> honestly, honestly, this is. <laughs> I think I'm fairly certain that Susan lighting those skulls on fire has to be the most metal thing to ever be on. <laughs> it's we, pretty metal. It's did pretty we talk metal, about Susan. the doctor trying to like casually murder uh, Za though? Like, no, oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't – she's got to get it from somewhere. Like, yeah. <laughs> It's true. Yeah, Hartnell is definitely the most murdery of all the doctors. <laughs> he's, he's the, he's the, um, he's the, uh, he's the uh, most likely to murder. He's way more chill about murder and death and dismemberment. Eh, eh, sometimes you got to kill people. Oh, or sometimes you just let them die, you know? I mean, good enough for Batman. Right? Yeah. I branded them with my special t- Doctor Who branding iron. <laughs> I was referencing Batman Begins, but oh, okay, that works too. I don't have to save you, kill you. Yeah, but I don't have to save you. I don't have to save you. I don't even have to save you. <laughs> Very heroic. Very heroic, Batman. <laughs> so really, the branding isn't that much of a. No, it's always <laughs> it's always Batman. been there. Yeah, it's always been there. And in and in eighty nine Batman, he murdered like a warehouse full of people. Well, in in Batman Returns, he murdered like he murdered like every person in that carnival. Yeah, remember when he like remember when he like tore the grenade off of that? He tore the pin off that grenade and like grinned before it blew up that that man, that clown man. Yeah. Oh yeah. Batman's a killer, guys. Yeah. I'm pretty sure he killed that monkey. Yeah, he killed the monkey. Yeah, he totally killed that monkey. <laughs> well, he didn't kill him. He just didn't save him. I love to save you, monkey. <laughs> <laughs> you think of shadows. What's that part of it? From the death of one monkey. <laughs> Your Batman sounds like Keanu Reeves. <laughs> That'd be a great Batman. <laughs> oh. <Whoa. laughs> Oh my god! Consequently, Christian Bale, like die Christian Bale, blonde, and he make a pretty, he, or not anymore, but he would have made a good Constantine like ten years ago. Oh yeah, maybe yeah. Uh, so oh I guess I guess the main thing that bothers me about about whatever we want to call this um, <laughs> the the cavemen, you know, ten one hundred thousand BC, which I think was like its original production title, right? Um, yeah, the original production title was 100,000 BC, which then changed to An Unearthly Child, um, when it aired, and mm-hmm. now has sort of become in, like, fandom, people refer to it as The Cavemen, because it's more specific than calling it An Unearthly Child. Because really, what else could you call this adventure? Fire. The Fire yeah, Fire. Fire! Run, running around some caves. Fire making. I'm just glad that we have never returned to cavemen in the history of Doctor Who. Well, oh it's God. boring. Cavemen are boring. They are really boring. The only time cavemen haven't been boring is Far Cry. It's a living. <laughs> Those Flintstones. Flintstones? No? Anybody? Oh yeah, totally. Well, I don't even count them as cavemen because they're so advanced. Yeah. 
I guess that's true. Fair enough. So in the pilot episode, in the first episode, season one, episode one of the Magic School Bus, there, there was <laughs> there's an episode called Lost in Space. It's an adaptation of the uh, the Magic School Bus Lost in the Solar System. It's the icon. We, we've all seen this episode. It's the one yeah. with Janet. They go to visit the solar system. Arnold takes off his helmet and turns to stone. Oh, right. The, this is the Arnold kills himself one. Right. Yeah. Oh my that, god. That, with that great meme of the guy just like, don't do it, Arnold. Don't do it. Ah, ah, he's dead for sure. <laughs> oh my god, that's my favorite. <laughs> so that to me, that pilot episode, that really gives a healthy stretch to the limits of this premise. You know, it's like this is a magic school bus. I am taking these kids to outer space. And one of like, them is going to die. One of them yeah. is going to effing die. And I'm going to bring <laughs> him back to life because I'm Miss Frizzle. <laughs> and I think when I think about all of, you know, when, when I think about the pop, 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 you know, of Doctor Who, early Doctor Who, I'm watching this episode and I'm like, this episode is no pop, pop, pop. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It is dark and boring and violent and... Not I mean, very exciting. Susan isn't having fun. <laughs> like, yeah. imagine if in the first episode of Magic School Bus, it's like, hey, kids, welcome to, like, King Henry's dungeon. Look at all of his. <laughs> all well, of these women kept giving birth to daughters. Isn't that here, awful? Here's the worst part about this, the part yeah. that you cannot forget. Mm-hmm. This wasn't one episode. This was three episodes spread out over three weeks. For children. For children. So you couldn't just watch you, – you watched one part of what we watched and then the next week you had to tune in for the second part of this. And the th- – I imagine the third part is the worst part because the fourth part, it's like, OK, well, at least this is the last one. But the third one is like I can't believe this is what this show is still about. I, I don't think I would have – if I was a kid in 1963 – and all of my friends were like, oh, man, you got to watch the Doctor Who show. I'm like, no, man, I tried part one of that. That was some BS. Well, no, part Talking one about. was good because part one was Unearthly Child. Well, right. part, yeah, part one was like really interesting and kind of spooky and kind of Twilight zone I really liked part one, but this is just. Yeah. I can't believe that this was the first adventure of the Doctor. I mean, that's the reason why, you know, the very next story is the Daleks, you know. <laughs> like we need to imagine if the first episode of the first comic of Batman was so bad and boring that the next issue they're like, okay, fine, we just have to make the Joker now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, just to win him back. Yeah. Um, I I feel like the Daleks. When you watch the Daleks, I think the Daleks actually works way better as a first story. Hmm. I I think it would have been cool if uh, they would have just skipped. From Unearthly Child into the Daleks. I mean, it's definitely what we're recommending our listeners to do. Yeah. Yeah. Like, the Daleks was the first um, Hartnell story I ever saw. Like, I had never seen the first episode, and I watched the Daleks. And granted, it is, like, eight parts, but Mm -hmm. it's really good. It is really good. And it's very silly. Yeah, yeah, and that's that, that's why that, that's the thing about the cavemen is it's not even like a really if it was like a Sid and Marty Croft version of cavemen that could be really fun, you know? Yeah, like Land of the Lost or like you know, but it's it's just such a weird, <laughs> like like dimly lit, almost kind of like like Ingar Bergman's cavemen. <laughs> it's it's super weird, and it's unfortunate because. Um, whereas Hussein only has only directed two episodes and his, the other episode he directed was Marco Polo. Oh my God. Yeah. So like he directed the, the absolute crap out of an unearthly child in Mar- Marco Polo. But this caveman story is just like, what a waste. Yeah. Well, like, I don't even know how you make this story narratively interesting, especially with the constraints that we now know that Hussein was under back then. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, dude, talk about a Kobayashi Maru. Right. Also, for a, for a thing that – for a show that they, that they were demanding it be educational. 
I know. Yeah, I know. I know. Nothing. No, no substance at all. Again, going back to the magic school bus, you know what I mean? Like, that's not actually what happens if you take off your helmet in space. But, like, you, you go back and you watch that episode. There's, like, valuable facts about, like, the planets and what stars are made of and how, right. how, how gravity mm-hmm. works, you know? Mm-hmm. But <laughs> it's just... Like no, a the, the this tribe never existed. No, <laughs> this is historically blasphemous in terms of, and most likely were not white. Let's be totally <laughs> honest. Did not have English accents. <laughs> they did not have English accents. Uh, but that's fine because that, that's just part of the show. I mean, you can't avoid that. But like, it wasn't even like. It was kind of like that really crappy Roland Emmerich movie, Ten Thousand BC, where. A, it's oh not God, real, so you're not getting that fun, like, apocalypto, like, ooh, this is, like, another chapter. But it's also not fun enough to be, like, campy, like like Land of the Lost. Right. Anyway. <laughs> it's, uh, it's not good. It's not good. Um, would you say, Nick, would you say, if you had, if you were forced to rewatch this or Time in the Ronnie, which would you choose? <laughs> Uh, oh, oh, time of the Ronnie, definitely. Okay, so there we go. So we got a new contender for worst episode of Doctor Who ever. I feel like time of the Ronnie was more fun, and plus, I just I feel like if I watch enough Ronnie, I w- I will eventually create my Ronnie episode. Yeah, That's you know true. what I mean. There's only two, and you've watched one of them, so yeah. <laughs> I feel like I just feel like this has nothing to because like, even the Ronnie, at least if you're watching Time and the Ronnie now, you have a bit of the canon. You know what I mean? Right. You're like, oh, well, now I know who the Ronnie is. Nothing, nothing about this episode will ever come up again. It's true. Like the the doc Peter Capaldi will never meet Zaz like grandson or something. <laughs> it's true. God, I'm so glad that uh, we never returned to cavemen. Yeah. I mean, what else would you? What else was there to say? <laughs> I mean, all they had to say in this one was fire. So I know, but it's just like there's no beloved character to like return to at all. Yeah. Honestly, I think the only reason that this is not in the the like the bottom ten of like all of Doctor Who is because it's attached to the first. Like it is the first like mm-hmm. quote mm-hmm. complete story. So there is that, like, nostalgia and, like, almost, I don't know, I guess reverence. I I totally get that, but I refuse to accept that this has anything to do with an unearthly child. Oh, right, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But, like, it's attached to it, so everyone's Mm -hmm. like, oh, well, the first episode's really good, so I guess I'll have to make up for that with the last three. Yeah. Is Action Comics, has anyone ever actually read, like, a PDF of Action Comics number one? I've read Action Comics number one multiple times. Is it good? No, God no. <laughs> neither is neither is uh, the first Batman issue. The first Spider Man's really good. I mean, if you if you like uh, Stan Lee, it's fine. But yeah. wait, 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 wait. Are, are you thinking of Amazing Fantasy number fifteen or the one where he meets the Fantastic Four? Oh, I was thinking of Amazing Fantasy fifteen. Okay, me too. Okay, um, the one where he meets the Fantastic Four is freaking great. Uh, the, the Golden Age comics, um, they're rough. They're really rough. It's literally, if I'm not mistaken, Action Comics number one is about a landlord overcharging his tenants and Superman beating the crap out of him. What? So Superman returns. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) No, no. I mean, I think that's literally what it is. Like he leaps into the building and he's just like, you're overcharging your renters. And they're just like, he's like, what? And he's like, punch. (laughs) <laughs> problem solved man i wish superman would do that for me i know right so he's a socialist oh yeah big time okay yeah in the in the original yeah <laughs> uh, before. and then again when he found jeans yeah <laughs> uh all right well that. yeah um if you want to visit our website at duelinggenre.com you can do that um, contact at contact at the doctor's companion dot us. If you have your own thoughts about the cavemen and fire and Zaw and that old woman that was killed, um, you know, what makes the red water come out and what makes it, <laughs> why does you know what, it stay you know on some knives and not on other? Uh, do, do I own a bad knife? Uh, yeah. let's, let's, um, let's call this right now. Let's set the start setting this up in between seasons of the show. 
it would be really awesome to do a mailbag episode where we talk oh, totally. about the yeah. stories that we just talked about. Like, so for the, for, for our first mailbag episode, we would do it after we talk about the beast below. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we'll have, then we'll have a mailbag episode and we'll talk about the first and second episode since we didn't do a mailbag episode for, uh, I'm down with season that one. I think that'd yeah. be cool. Cause it wouldn't require any homework for us. Like, but we could record an entertaining thing and mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. Good. Yeah. So send us your emails. Yeah. Contact us at, at the doctor's TDC companion dot us. At, yeah, contact at the doctor's companion dot us. Tweet us at TDC pod. You can visit us on Tumblr at the doctor's companion podcast dot Tumblr dot com. All one word, no weird apostrophe bits. And as always, you can plug us. You can like us on Facebook, leave a five star review on iTunes, which is always the coolest thing you can do for a podcast and listen to our other shows. Back to the Future Minute is going strong uh, with um, with Scott and I and rotating guests. And Cassandra, have you been on part two yet? Not yet. Not yet, but you're going to. Yes. Sweet. Okay. It, it all bleeds together. Um, In fact, by the by time night. this comes out, she might be on it next, I think. Time travel. Yeah. Time travel. Yeah. And uh, uh, Gork by Night is going strong. We're in the middle of a break, <laughs> but uh, Scott and I are back. We are back in the garage. We are working on Geek by Night. We are going to get those last few episodes out, and it's going to be great. And you can find out more about supporting us and helping us out at DuelingGenre.com slash support uh we are less we are less than how much how much money scott less than 70 dollars from our first goal less than 70 dollars away from our first goal which is a, a weekend edition of back to the future minute the no roads edition but um you know as we keep going up the ladder there'll be more and more stuff that we want to do for you guys and a lot of that has to do with the doctor companion and a special thanks to our patreon associate producer David Jeffries for his uh, sizable and uh, inexhaustibly appreciated contribution to the uh, the dueling genre, the good ship dueling genre. Yeah, here, here. So, uh, wherever you are, David. Uh, we hope you're having a good day. And uh, join us next time. We will be talking about the 1984 classic Highlander. Nope, <laughs> not correct. But we are talking about uh, author Diana. Gabaldon's favorite uh, Doctor Who episode, The Highlanders. Nice. Um, because, oh, that uh, explains so much. Yeah. Did you? Yeah. Did you not know that she named that character after him? Shut up! Are you kidding me? No, no. Seriously. Ah. Oh, okay. Yeah, that character is named. Uh, <laughs> Nick is completely lost. Um, <laughs> yeah, there's a there's a character named. Uh, it, it's Jamie Fraser on Outlander. Is the name of the character? Yeah, he's the male lead. Right. And on yes. uh, Doctor Who, uh, in our next story, we're going to meet a companion named uh, Jamie McCrimmon, played by... Fraser Hines. Fraser Hines. Yeah. yeah. So, so yeah, Jamie Fraser on Outlander is named after that companion. Or that show has a lot of, a lot of hot, steamy uh, romance scenes. It does. I, I feel like Outlander is like what Fifty Shades of Grey wishes it was. Mm-hmm. <laughs> to be totally honest. So Twilight. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, yeah. It really does wish it was Twilight, doesn't it? Well, if uh, well, Patrick Trouton fans, hold on to your uh, your linens and mm-hmm. <laughs> start your grinning. And, uh, and I'm excited for Nick to meet Jamie. Because yeah. I love Jamie. Jamie's one of the best companions we've ever had on the show. So I'm excited. Yeah. All right. We'll be back next week. Bye.